so let's see what you'll need when you're going to go to the woods there is some collecting gear that you'll need and here in the picture you can see random stuff uh, from a basket the basket it's important to have especially if you're going to collect fleshy mushrooms if you intend to collect more uh, conks or shelf fungi then you don't really need a basket for that um but why do you need a hatchet protection glasses and um, saw now many as i told you many uh, medicinal fungi are shelf fungi fungi that grow on uh, trees and on um, with roots of the trees and so on so you will need a hatchet to get them down or a saw imagine yourself that you're going in the woods and you want to pick shaga mushroom from birch trees uh, in that case you will need uh, these tools and even protection glasses because bits of mushrooms will um, get you everywhere you know so you need to protect your eyes against those um, you also need some uh, paper bags a pen and some labels just in case that you want to put them separately in paper bags for example you're not sure about the idea of a mushroom and you want to keep that separately because if you're going to mix them up with some other mushrooms in there and you want to look for spores for the identification then you have to keep it in a separate paper bag not plastic bag paper bag plastic bag it's going to turn them moldy especially if you um, keep them tight in those plastic bags and you put them in the fridge or so somewhere and you forget about them they will get moldy in paper bags that's not going to happen um, you'll need a pen if you want to take some notes for example you found that mushroom at the base of the tree you don't know exactly uh, what could it be but uh, if you have an idea of the tree uh, species you can note the tree species where you found it in what season what date and so on so you can write down some important notes that will be useful for identification um, now a knife a uh, mushroom hunter knife it has this uh, brush at the it distal end you know that's uh, useful if you're going to see some kind of uh, mushroom that it's really dirty and uh, you want to brush uh, the surface so you can uh, have a clear picture for example um, and the knife it's useful to have especially if you're going to cut the fleshy mushrooms in half to make sure that they don't have maggots and stuff that's going to serve you you'll need water definitely um, a pair of white socks why would you need a pair of white socks um, that's important and essential to have and I would encourage you to take those on and to have long pants when you're going in the woods and to put the socks over the pants um, and to check yourself from time to time because you know you're walking in the woods there might be ticks around there so uh, especially after rain they will uh, pop from the dirt and they will crawl all over on the leaves so you can check yourself from time to time and make sure that you don't have ticks crawling uh, on a white background you, they will be way more visible than on some um, darker colors and of course you'll need a sandwich and an apple if you're going to uh, get hungry in the woods uh, so that's what I'm doing usually I'm making sure that I have water plenty of water um, for several hours and some food so 
this is pretty much what you need, you know. Um, can't really think of anything else. Maybe a backpack, so you can put them in the backpack, and that's all. So I want to share some of my experience on uh, how to collect mushrooms in the wild, and um, you have to know that there are different species that have uh, tenants in them, and I'm talking about maggots. Uh, some of them they have more maggots than others and uh, I would list here uh, Among the ones that really have a lot sometimes is um, the porcini mushrooms or boletus edulis and mm, more likely uh, some other mushrooms that are found in the boletaceae family and also the rusulas like Rusula xerampelina, for example, usually has a lot of tenants in them. Um, <clears throat> so, these mushrooms are mandatory for you to uh, cut them in half. Actually, this uh, vertical line here tells you that you have to cut them in half and make sure that you, you don't have a little channels in there and little worms. Um, crawling because if you don't do that you might have the surprise when you're going to get home that you collected uh, a bunch of uh, this kind of mushrooms and you have to toss up to half of them so a good habit is to to uh, when, when you find these mushrooms just to cut them in half and to make sure that uh, they don't have those and then you can put them in your basket. Um, now here are some other ones, like, for example, the honey mushroom, Armillaria tabescens or Armillaria melea, another one. Um, you can collect those in bouquets, in the whole bouquet, but, you know, you could put those bouquets in your basket and I bet that if you collect about 10, 10 of those, uh, then your basket is going to be full. And usually this mushroom is uh, quite uh, common and frequent. And you, you might find yourself without space um, in the basket. So what I used to do is to cut the upper part of the mushroom including part of the stem because in this mushroom the lower part of the stem it's rather woody a little bit so I would cut that so you can see the line which is horizontal and then you have only uh, part of the, the upper part of the mushroom uh, including the cap in the basket so that's a very um, useful way to collect this mushroom and this way you can fit in a basket with the same volume um, maybe 20 20 bouquets instead of 10 okay so for macrolepiota procera or the snake mushroom uh, and also coprinus comatus these two mushrooms are kind of related um, the stem it's not edible it's rather fibrous and in this case I would recommend you to use only the cap but you have also the choice of collecting the stem and what you can do is to dry it up and then put it into a coffee grinder grind it up and then um, put that into a jar and you can use that powder when you're going to make some um, yummy mushroom sauces for your pasta or for something else so that's what I do when I find these mushrooms and it's a delicacy to use the stalks too not only the cap uh, just be careful with this mushroom because uh, when you collect the cap and you mix it up with some other 
mushrooms in your basket then it's going to turn like what you see here in picture uh, number six so in between the gills there will be a lot of messy um, little fragments broken from twigs and the dirt from other mushrooms and so on so it's best to keep them um, aside from the other mushrooms is possible okay so if you're thinking about the chanterelle mushroom here with number nine that doesn't really have a lot of tenants in them uh, but uh, if you really want to then you can uh, cut them in half just to make sure that it doesn't have anything like that uh, I mean depends very much on how open are you to um, taste some additional protein in there <laughs> in the mushroom I me mean, personally if I see the mushroom with a couple of uh, channels in there then it's fine uh, but uh, there are people that uh, <laughs> when they will see one little channel in there they will freak out and they won't want that mushroom uh, to be in their soup or in their sauce so depends very much on how tolerant are you to this every mushroom hunter has his own method of collecting mushrooms so uh, in this case my friend here uh, he just caught the stem of this uh, porcini and he saw that it doesn't have any maggots which is uh, really cool um, in in another example you will see that um, the turkey tail has mold on the uh, underneath so a mushroom like that you should just leave it in there other than that you can see different mushrooms how we collect them in the woods This is a really cool mushroom and it's it's an amazing uh, find <laughs> all the time. It can grow pretty big and it's hollow inside. Uh, yeah, so uh, it doesn't really have maggots but you can see that it's hollow inside right there. Yeah. And it has this big base and yeah it's better if you kind of place some more leaves on top of it and let it let it cook in there <laughs> so you can come and collect some more mushrooms later for example here if you see there's a little bit of mycelium growing so let's plant that back in the soil or in the leader and let it grow yep